Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Virtual Nunchucks, welcome to the channel. Today, uh, what you see in the background of course is Subnautica, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. I want to talk to you guys about a news update that was happening in the game industry not too long ago, and I haven't done one of these in a while, so uh, we're going to talk for a few minutes. I uh, hope you guys are having a great day. If you like this kind of content, rather it's news updates, reviews of the latest games and, and stuff coming out, and of course occasional playthroughs like you see in Subnautica here on the screen. Uh, and sometimes just goofy stuff like the clowns in the top five the other day and all that kind of stuff. We do all kinds of goofy stuff around here. So if you enjoy that kind of content, hit that uh, subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and of course, hit that like button uh, to let me know what you enjoyed and what you didn't. Because, hey, I need to know. Otherwise, I can't put content out there that you guys like. Anyway, so here's the deal. Um, did you guys see the latest? I, I don't know if it happened this weekend or Monday. I don't remember when I saw it, but... I saw that Sony is not participating in E3 2020 again. Now, uh, for those of you who know me, you know that I have a business degree. You know that uh, that, that that's the kind of mentality that I have um, in my professional career. That's what I was geared towards. Uh, however, um, I'm no longer in the working world. So occasionally when I see things like this, uh, I scratch my head. Um, because to me, here's here's what this looks like. Sony announced that they were not going to participate in E3 2020, although they said it's a great platform, and you know they they heaped praise on E3 and thought it was a good platform, but they didn't think it was the right platform for PlayStation in 2020. Now, uh, I've been following E3 for a long time. Uh, for those of you who also don't know, I'm one of the oldest gamers on the internet right now. Um, been playing uh, games since like before the uh, advent of Atari. So. Um, I am familiar with gaming and the trends and stuff like that a lot of time. I try to keep on top of that kind of stuff. But here's the thing. I've been following E3 for a long time. And E3 has always been the place where you announce big releases, uh, the place where you announce big console releases, um, and big, uh, big things in the gaming industry. Um, as well as show off some of the newer hardware to your potential customers, to the to the press, to generate hype. That's what E3 basically is, a big hype machine. Uh, because you, you do it in June and you get everybody hyped up for the next six months and they save up money to buy the new consoles or the new games or whatever. And that's, you know, that's it turned into a big hype machine. So what I don't understand is the decision to not go. Last year, I get it. There wasn't a whole lot of uh, new stuff they were going to announce. Um, you know, Ghost of Tsushima is coming out this year, I think around spring sometime this year. Um, you know, there's just different things that are coming out, but we already knew those were coming. Uh, we also knew that they were getting ready to gear up for the PS5. Um, and so, and they have a big install base, so they weren't worried about it because they pretty much already killed it with this console generation, the current one. Here's my dilemma looking at it as, as an outsider who's not in the company board meetings and going, and this is why we're not doing it. Um, you don't have you don't have that hype machine behind you. You have your install base, the people that are on PS4 uh, already that can uh, simply pay attention to stuff like the, uh, what do they call that, the, the monthly uh, PlayStation Live or whatever they call it that they, they, they put out. Here's, here's my problem, okay? A lot of these people that are on PS4 now, and this is something you need to be aware of, Sony, are people from Xbox uh, that, that migrated over, my brother being one of them. Uh, he, he was a big Xbox fan. He loved his Xbox when Xbox 360 came out and all that kind of stuff, and he loved it, he, you know. But the reason he loved it is because they had exclusive content. At the time, like um, Mass Effect, and you know that universe was was supposed to be exclusively to Xbox. So if you wanted to play Xbox, you or or rather you wanted to play Mass Effect, you went to Xbox. If you wanted to play Crackdown, you went to Xbox. If you wanted to play all this all these other games, you went to Xbox um, because they didn't have them on PS3 at the time. And then when Xbox One came out, my brother saw that they really didn't have a whole lot of. Um, stuff as far as launch titles and he saw a few things that he didn't like that they were doing with the console for Xbox One so he migrated over to PS4 I'm on PS4 my you know my youngest brother is on PS4 so he migrated over there 
the problem is is that Xbox has been you know came out in uh, last year at E3 and said Xbox Series X and they shut off the platform or at least the concept for the platform it's big tower looks like a computer tower really um but they did it right they you know they they generated the hype they needed I think uh they showed off potential releases they showed off some of the studios that they bought to help the console uh so they look like they're geared to really do some damage to PlayStation and here's the thing um again you don't have the hype machine you only have your install base so if you're going to do this Sony my thing is is you better have some serious announcements to make uh, at some event somewhere even if you just rent a, a a theater for a day invite all the press out uh, or if you do it over the internet it better be some some really big announcements like you better show off the actual console you better show off some serious launch titles and you better give us the nitty gritty on everything coming out for for your console in the next uh, few months because both consoles are going head to head in in uh, around Christmas time this year so um or the holidays whatever you want to call it I'm not trying to be politically incorrect or insensitive to people's things I'm just saying okay so so here's the thing uh this doesn't make a lot of sense to me again for the same reasons I just mentioned if Xbox has the hype they've announced it they're probably going to show up a bunch of stuff this E3 for the launch window, uh, they're probably going to give you all the details. And Sony missed out. Sony should go head to head with them too. If they have a better console, they shouldn't be afraid to show it off. They shouldn't be afraid to announce it to the world and say, here it is. Uh, we can do better than Xbox or whatever. And here's why. And generate that hype. Because I'm afraid if you don't, if you're not an install-based fan, and if you don't follow the X, the PlayStation Live stuff that comes out, or it's PlayStation Monthly, or whatever they call those silly things that they do, those little video clip things they do on the internet, then you're not gonna know, and that's scary. The press doesn't know, which is uh, a lot of your uh, word of mouth comes from Game Informer and IGN and places like that. So I, I just don't understand. I really don't understand. Um, so that's just my opinion. I, I think that they're missing the mark here. Uh, and from a marketing, uh, standpoint, they're really missing the mark. Uh, at least in my, my head, everything that I've been taught as a, as a business professional, this is not the way to go. You want to get as many people eyes on and touching your console and playing your console even if it's early builds of the game as possible so they can be hyped so they can spend their money on the newest console games etc coming out that's my thing um, and you're not doing that this year so it just better be one very very awesome presentation and you better present it somewhere where people can get hands on with the games and things like that so that they can show it off uh, but that again that's my opinion uh, you guys, if you're free to disagree with me in the comment section below, you're free to agree with me. We'll have a conversation down there in the comment section. I don't mind. Um, I always love to talk to you guys. Uh, and another thing that stuck out to me, okay, they went to, what is it, C CES 2019, okay, and they took the stage to announce, and I listened to the whole thing, so don't get me wrong, there were a few announcements like games and stuff like that, okay. But their biggest reveal was PS5 logo, which we knew it was going to be that. PS5, we knew that. Because um, that's their styling and all that kind of stuff. And, and there are people making parody videos of it. Uh, Young Yeah is one of them. And honestly, if you haven't seen that video, good lord, that was so funny. Because uh, it's very uncharacteristic of him to do something like that. But... Uh, that was one of their biggest things, and it was all over the internet, you know, PS5 reveals logo and blah, blah, blah. And they did give you a little um, technical blurb of what they were planning on doing as far as game sharing and, and, and integrating the community and all that kind of stuff, but it was just very not exciting. So I'm kind of worried about who's in charge of marketing this bad boy 
uh, because if Sean Layden, let me let me just say this, and then then I'll uh, tell you guys what's coming up soon. Sean Layden, uh, if he were, I think if he were still with Sony and he was with PlayStation America or whatever, you know, his title was, I think uh, we would still be seeing Sony's presence at E3, and I think they would try to blow everybody out of the water. But that's just me. So I'm kind of scared for the marketing department and the higher-ups at Sony. I think this might be a bad year for them if they don't get their stuff together. So that's just me. Now, I'm a Sony person. Uh, you know, I've had a PlayStation in my in my house since um, the PS1 days. Um, I did play Xbox, so don't get me wrong. I play both of them, but, but the main console has always been the PS4 because of the exclusive and because of the things that they'd have, just like Xbox 360 and Mass Effect and all that stuff back in the day. But I just, I'm scared. I'm scared for Sony. I don't think this is a good business decision. And if Phil Spencer and his boys got it together, they could win the console war this year. I'm going to go ahead and put it out there. So unless it comes down, what it's basically going to come down to this year is, at least for initial sales, is going to be the hype train, and if you have good launch, launch titles at launch, if you have exclusive launch titles and awesome games at launch, you can get a very, very big head start. And this year, because the consoles are very similar in, in specs, it's going to come down to exclusive content. So whoever wins that battle is going to win this war this time. That's just my opinion, looking at it uh, from a business perspective. I put my professional hat on uh, today, and I've been looking at it. So... Uh, that's my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, of course, and we'll have a conversation. In the meantime, though, um, I think if you guys liked the Subnautica video that went up yesterday, if you guys uh, liked the goofy characters and clowns that I work with uh, for the top five games that are still giving content to players, if you like that content, uh, let me know by liking those videos and talking to me in the comments because that will determine if you see more of the game in uh, the future and more of the stupid characters in the future if not that's okay too um, but I love to do something fun and exciting every once in a while so it is what it is alright guys don't forget you can follow me on facebook.com slash virtual nunchucks you can follow me all over on twitter at vnunchucks where I am most of the time other than this platform of course youtube uh, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to uh, hit that notification bell and of course uh, leave a like on the video and uh, comment if you have an opinion. Uh, you can also follow me on twitch.tv slash virtual nunchucks which one of these days I'll get back over there but go ahead and follow me over there anyway because you never know uh, I might make a big announcement who knows. I'm kind of waiting to try to update my setup with my cameras and things like that before I tackle uh, live streaming again and stuff like that but uh, I found out playing Subnautica that it really should be done live um, because there's so much to discover, there's so much to do uh, that if you don't do it live, um, there's just no way you can get it all uh, in, 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 you know, in video form and stuff like that. So I'm thinking about doing that live uh, with you guys, but I'm trying to wait until I have updated cameras or, you know, set up that works better before I do stuff like that. Um, but let me know, and, and you know, if you guys want to see more Subnautica, if you do, uh, we can always do it live here uh, via the PS4 or something. I'll figure something out if you guys want to see more. Uh, it's cool, and we can hang out and have a good time. Anyway, guys, hope you have a great day, and we'll see you on Monday, because every Monday through Friday, I do something fun and exciting and new on this channel, one way or the other. We will get back to Jedi Fallen Order for those of you who are using my walkthrough to help yourselves. That's okay. Um, but I figured I'd give you guys a break because I've been wall-to-wall -wall Jedi Fallen Order for a while. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to break it up a little bit, even for myself, because it gets monotonous. <laughs> All right. You guys have a great day, and we'll see you soon. All right, bye.